Fire away. How we doing? Everyone's good? Game week. Finally. No, no mics? All right. Good. Uh, I am, you know, well, heck, last time I was here was after the first or second day of practice, right? Um, you know, we have improved significantly since then. And I'm real happy. You know, we go into fall camp with objectives and going into, you know, a couple of days left of practice and preparation before we play our first game, I feel, you know, we've, we've accomplished those things. And um, there's synergy, you know what I mean? There's cohesiveness that's occurring. You can see the guys are playing together, they're getting comfortable. Uh, guys are, you know, really comfortable communicating with one another in all positions. You know, it's not exclusive to one or the other. And, and then that's exciting, I guess, as an offensive coordinator when you get to the point where you have other guys communicating, talking about the game plan and plays and strategies and techniques, you know that you're trending in the right direction. So I'm com I'm happy, you know. I'm pleased. Comfortable? I don't know if I'll ever say yes, I'm comfortable, but I'm pleased. Athletic guy, strong, has some natural blocking ability, you know what I mean, however you want to define that, but that, you know, I mean, this is a very natural blocking ability. Excited about his progress, you know, as we go, as we you know, obviously that's a position that we're always looking to generate depth and want depth. Um, for us to be able to acquire him at this point is awesome. You know, it's going to help us. And we want competition in every room. And uh, you've heard me say before, um, you know, programs go as their line, lines go, right? Teams that have great offensive lines and defensive lines are usually great teams. So, um, and that's what we're striving to be. Is there any way you can bring the playbook in the time you get in? <laughs> well, you know, it's a challenge, right? You know what I mean? But, you know, realistically, it's, it's, it's tough, right, how much he, he could or would play, you know, but um, like we said seven days ago, that's that's a pretty quick turnaround, right? Whatever we're in. You talked about knowing some of the outside zones coming from side to the ball. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess I've seen it before. You know what I mean? Like all coaches, are, I'm a film junkie, and we watch. You know, people that are successful and have, you know do good things, and um, there are similarities to that, of course. Um, you know, with terminology and stuff like that. We've never shared that. You know, we, you know, and I know Coach Fuchs, and, and to the credit of all the other offensive linemen, Mike Nowitzki, um, you know, specifically grabbing him and kind of talking about terms and what we call these combos and what's this play called versus that play, and you know, and in his mind, he's you know, disassociating with whatever it was before to what it's now. So there's always, you know, to your point, the, you know, how long does it take to get ready? Well, when you have to unlearn something that you've been taught and kind of, you know, it's like learning a new language and it takes a little time. So once he gets that figured out, it'll, it'll be, he'll be humming. Mm -hmm. Well, we're looking for the things that you would want, probably the characteristics of any offensive line, right? Know what they're doing. Physical, nasty, right, and athletic. And uh, I think if you asked any program across the country, those are the words that you would hear about when you talk about offensive line play. But as we have grown in that position, we've created competition. You have to get that group to play together as a unit, right, okay? It's the most important position group in football. The most important position is the quarterback, as we all know, right? And that's, you know, they make the big bucks. But the group, the most important group is that offensive line. And so as we go and you start cross-training people to allow us to have the depth that we need at that position, right? Because you don't want to just say, well, hey, we'll put in this player just because he's a left tackle. No, we want to make sure that we have our best five offensive linemen on the field at any given moment. Um, for those guys to learn to work together and have that competition and cross-train guys and now start to settle in on what that would look like, what those patterns look like. Um, you can see that. That's part of why I'm pleased as, as the offense has evolved through fall camp. I'm very pleased with where they're going. How much does Trevor Wilson's entrance now really affect your Well, I know Lance talked about that and commented on where that is, but you know, we're always prepared to have somebody unavailable, I guess, right? And that goes to the credit of um, you know, the parity that we have in a lot of rooms, not just that room, and I've talked about that before and hear about how, you know, we're, we, we have some depth at a lot of positions which allow us to be multiple. Um, so, you, you know, those kind of things grow and expand. How does other guys respond to talking about Trevor not being there and not being there for this Well, they're really excited to play. 
you know, and a, a couple guys in you know, particular that, that have really, you know, they've had good camps, and, and we've talked about them here before, but like Kevin Terry and Quentin Skinner, okay, Doug, you know, we've talked about Doug, you know, being a new transfer, has been in here before, uh, and it just meant that they got more reps, you know, and then they've handled it well, and they're, they're all very excited, and I feel confident their ability to perform. Well, he, he brings a, ver, a, a linear vertical threat. You know, he's a long, big body, right? And he, he's, I call him a grass chewer because when he takes steps now, it's like, I mean, it's like a damn giraffe, you know what I mean, running, and he just takes two steps, and it's like six yards, you know? And so he, so he can go, and he'll be able to take a top off. He's done a really good job through fall camp of uh, making some contested catches. And, um, you know, he's, he's had a really good camp. He has. And, he, we're, and he, he's smart, and so we're cross-training to play a lot of different positions, you know? And we feel comfortable we could slide him into – any of the receiver spots, and he would know what to do. Andy, you guys have talked a lot about being in his camp and how well he's performed. And, and yesterday, Lance said he was a starter. I, I wonder, does that, the fact that Bean had such a good camp and Jalen held him off, does that make you feel any different kind of way about Jalen and, and his progression? Well, I don't know if it makes me feel different, but it gives me confidence. Right, that you have, uh, like I've said before, you have two guys that have played college football, right? And that's that's rare, you know what I mean? Nowadays, and I say, I say that, but it's true. Two guys who started games, um, and so you're comfortable with the things that we're doing. You know that you know that there's depth there. You know that there's reps there, and it's not just, hey, how's this guy going to respond when he gets into a game under the lights? Well, they've done it. They both done it, so we know the answer to that question. Um, and I and I'm crazy not to reiterate this, but we talk about competition in this program. And when you have competition in that room, it permeates to all spots on, in all three phases of the game. And it's, and it's very evident. And so uh, J to Jason's credit, he has had an unbelievable camp. He's had a great camp. He's playing the best football I've seen him play. I've only known him for like 14 months, but, but he's playing the best football he has. Um, Coach Z in that quarterback room has done a great job with those guys. And I, and I think because sometimes competition can create strife, right, and be unhealthy for a program. And in that room in particular, I think they're, they're happy for the other guy's success. You know, the first time that, you know, you see a guy make a heck of a throw, it means it's usually the other one who goes up to high five him and congratulate him and say, hey, heck, heck of a throw. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with those guys and how they developed. I also wanted to ask you, uh, I know you're not going to tell us, but do you know your first play? Hmm. First, first Friday night? I, mean, is that, is that I don't know yet. I got to kind of whittle down to a few. Dude. Yep, I do, but um, we'll see, you know. Yeah, I could have told you on June 1st last year what our first play was going to be last year because I knew that's where we were going to run. I could have told you that. Actually, I said that, I think, on one of our first offensive meetings. This was going to be the first play we run of the year just because of where we were. I don't know yet right now, though. What was it? It's just an outside zone play, I think, to the left or the right. Pretty sure. Someone have to check that. <laughs> Well, um, I think his decision making, his understanding what we're doing offensively, and of course when I say these things, I'm talking about to all of our kids because I, mean, I mean a year ago we're, I mean we still had only been 20 practices right to play a game, um, but it goes it, it goes to the you know the question up here a little bit about okay well if he's playing that good and Jalen's still the starter you, you must be really pleased and, and we are uh, about where they've where they've elevated their game to in their development, but Jalen specifically his understanding what we're doing offensively. His ability to anticipate throws and get off of progressions really quick is 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 uh, it's at a high level right now, you know. And of course, both those guys can make plays and keep plays alive with their feet, and uh, that's important, you know, for us here at Kansas. And and we need to make sure the guys can, you know, that's true of any football at any level really. When you have quarterbacks who can keep plays alive and extend plays and scramble around or, or take off running when there's you know a giant hole in the a gap on a on a third and ten to pick up first downs. Those, those unanticipated yards, as we would call them, junk yards, as defensive coaches would call them, they're, they're critical for offenses that are playing good. Well, you'll have to stay tuned for that to get that number, the, that number specifically. But I've said all along, I'm telling you, if we have – 11 really good offensive linemen, I would find a way to put them all on the field at the same time. And I mean that. Like, that's one of the strengths that we have is that there's parity, 
in a lot of our skill positions, there's competition at a lot of those skill positions. Our stress can be using those personnel groupings and packages, making sure they're, they're developed enough and that they're holistic enough that defenses have to defend everything. Um, but I'm excited about that group, that room. They have continued to develop throughout fall camp as well. Absolutely. It is. It is. Because I think those guys see that there's, you know, and I, I express to everyone on, on offense, especially skill players nowadays, because everyone, I'll, I'll share some information with you. I show all the offensive skill players um, a, a graph, a chart every year to start camp. And it's, it's the highest paid players in the NFL. So people like Travis Kelsey and uh, whoever else, right? Okay. But <laughs> uh, so all these people who are marquee, multi-million dollar NFL players a year and how many times that they take offensive snaps and how many times they're actually targeted or they've touched the football. And that number hovers between 85 to 90% of the time those players aren't, it's usually between 80 to 90% that those guys aren't getting targeted or touching. So I explained to them, I said, there's some individuals that are making 30 some million dollars a year to play this game and they're only getting the ball 10 to 15% of the time, right? Okay, so that's the reality. And so everyone has to learn how to play football when they don't have the ball, right? And I think that's what's making a lot of our skill players a special group is because I think we have a lot of unselfish guys. You'll see downfield blocking from the receivers. You'll see the running backs block more pass protecting. Okay, you'll see them block for each other. You see the tight ends doing both. Um, so for them to understand that, it's, that football is as much about what happens when you don't have the ball um, is a big deal. Well, I think, it, you know, your personnel will always, as I've said before, dictate to what you can and can't do it to some degree, right? You can say that you want to be these things and you can train within reason of what those things are. But if you can be better doing something else, then do something else, right? So, so I think evolving is a key word there that you said. I think you evolve within a year. I mean, you evolve as an offense week to week, let alone we're talking almost a decade ago now. Do you know what I mean? Some of the names you dropped, which is impressive, by the way, to bring back those guys would get a kick out of that, that you brought their names up. But, um, you know, who you are, I think it's one of the hardest things in coaching to do is to really predict what you're going to look like week one to week five to week 12, right? And then when, you know, you brought up names way back in 2013, you know, 15 games, right? What does is, what is the 15th game look like? So you have to be multiple enough, you have to be dynamic enough, and your kids have to have a baseline of training and understanding well enough that you can kind of stack the Lego pieces together, if you will. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, okay, so, you know, I guess my growth professionally as a coach would be, you know, let's say, say, <clears throat> 16 years ago when I was first coordinating, you wouldn't think ahead long enough to say, you know what, there's a lot of depth in this room. What are the packages and the plays that we could do that would put several of these guys in the field at the same time? Okay, right? And that would be of, be of any skill player, right? Oh, man, hey, we really got, we got eight really good offensive linemen. What creative things can we do to – Utilize them instead of maybe just having guys on a rotation, right? Kind of, you know, like running back, well, it's your turn to go in, you know, just rotate in. We need to be creative as an offense coach, I think, to get the guys in the field and make sure that they're being utilized and, and you know, getting reps. Because at some point, what happens, and of course, as you evolve over the course of a season over time, you might say, hey, you're really good at all these and you have all these guys, but then injuries occur. All of a sudden, you have one. Is he developed well enough to be just the guy at that spot, right? And so those are, you know, it's maybe a, some foresight that I've learned probably through my career to go, okay, we've got to start training these things to the spring and fall camp and give a little, little dose of this because that package could grow. I think they should be really excited, you know, um, I know Lance had probably, you know, talked about it in, in, when, when Kai came here about, you know, having those two individuals from the state and having recognizable names in the backfield. I think it's a big deal. I think it's the kind of thing that the population of Kansas can rally behind, you know, and get excited. 
Because that's where we're trying to go as a program, to be that institution. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.